I think if you don't know lawyers, if you aren't a kind of company with law in your bones, you know, you can't build products directly for lawyers. And we're really proud of what we've built. Alex Fawcett is the VP of co-counsel, the Gen AI assistant from Thomson Reuters created for professionals. Law firms are ha having to invest more and more in technology. They have access to the, the latest legal models. We have that content that, that, that kind of serves lawyers every day. Live from Legal Geek Conference in London, we're talking about investing in AI without having a strategy consumer AI tools that aren't built for legal standards, and of course about co-counsel. Lawyers aren't experts in AI, they're not, they're not prompt engineers, so by buying a kind of professional grade AI solution, these are the kind of things you can get. We will talk about uh, some, some things, we will talk about Thomson Reuters, we will talk about yeah. co-counsel, um, but first, a few weeks ago I had an interesting conversation with a uh, head of global AI of Simmons & Simmons. Yeah. And he told me in the future, every law firm will be a tech company. I'm very curious to hear your view on the tech side of law firms in, yeah. say, the following years. Yeah, it's an interesting point. And I think we, I think we, rec we recognize that law firms are ha having to invest more and more in technology. Um, but they're not technology companies. Thomson Reuters is, is a technology company. Um, and we believe we can bring some differentiated value to market through that. So we have... Um, technology people, we have AI engineers, but we also have domain expertise as well. We have access to the, the latest legal models. And again, crucially as well, we have that content that, that, that kind of serves lawyers every day. You have a lot of different roles, a lot of different yeah, specialities yeah. within one company. And also you have a lot of content, which I think makes a difference between you and other companies because yeah, yeah. You're, you own so much content and you can use that content, for example, with your AI systems. Yeah, yeah. So I'll give a, like a really concrete example of that. So to this week at Legal Geek, we're launching a new product called Practical Law Deep Research, um, which is a deep research capability that, that we know is the number one thing that lawyers ask for out of AI. Um, there are other providers on the market that offer deep research capabilities, but none of these are, are underpinned by the content that Thomson Reuters have. Um, and that's what, that's what differentiates it. Lawyers know they can trust it uh, and it provides higher quality outputs than, than some of the other providers on the market. And we're really proud of it. We think it's a watershed moment. And, and can we see this deep research as the deep research that we already had, for example, in ChatGPT and Perplexity, where you can ask a question, it takes, I don't know, 15 minutes before you get an answer, and then you get like a, a full document with, with sources, with a lot of uh, links, with, and, yeah. and also a concrete answer in your question. So it's a, it's a similar type of capability, yeah. I think an interesting way to look at it is, um, looking at consumer AI products like OpenAI, ChatGPT, and Claude um, versus professional-grade AI that, that Thomson Reuters provides. Yeah, there is um, a big difference there. Yeah, yeah. and the, the difference between professional-grade AI and consumer AI really is it's that content that, that we already talked about, but it's also that domain expertise. So we, we have access to the same models, and that's the book smarts, but we also have the street smarts. So we have, we have teams and teams of lawyers that both create the content, but like work on these products every day. And I think if you don't know lawyers, if you aren't, if you aren't a, a kind of company with law in your bones, you know, you can't build products directly for lawyers. And, and we're really proud of what we've built. You need to know what you're using also exactly, as a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because I saw that you have, what is it, more than 650 people checking these tools, checking the answers, also making sure that things are correct within the tools that you use. Yeah. And of those 650 people, there are also lawyers. There are people with a legal background. Yeah. Is this something you see also evolving for the future that lawyers will have a different role and they, their role will change to check these kind of systems to make sure that all the answers are correct and that all the input and content is correct. Yeah, so we have, we have, like, we have two ways of looking at this. We have 650 practical law editors. So these are lawyers with, with a legal background who, who create our content. Um, we, and we have lawyers in, in our trust team who are or experts in specific practice areas who check the output every day. Um, but we also have 600,000 automated tests that we run through Coca. 600,000. 600,000. We run 600,000 tests every year. And, and, and that's part of the trust. And so it's a kind of our number one principle as a product, product organization. I'm part of the product organization at Thomson Reuters. Uh, and trust, accuracy, and reliability is, is the most important thing. And you, kind of, you mentioned performance a little bit there. Um, and so we, we put trust and accuracy over, over performance. And so some of these deep research models, yes, they do take a little bit longer but the output that you get is, is much better and we believe that's a real positive. And, and also something you're working on a lot is the agentic part of, of the tools. I mean, we, we see now a lot in the market, we see oh, agents is going to be the big next thing. Yeah. Agents is going to be uh, the, the new gold. And it's also something you already added and, and keep working on adding to your platforms that you that lawyers can work with, with agents to make sure that processes are handled automatically without someone needing to push a button. Yeah. 
So, so back in August, we launched we launched our agentic expert guided workflows, which are end to end agentic workflows that lawyers can use to, to solve specific problems. Um, but again, they're built specifically for for law based use cases, uh, and that that's different than kind of a, an agent from ChatGPT. Um, and there's there's real value there in in, in what Thompson Lawyers offers. Well, one other point I want to touch on is is ri uh, reliability and and hallucinations. Of course, we see. A lot of questions also from lawyers when they're using AI tools. Yeah. And you just mentioned the difference between a, a, an AI tool for consumers and an yeah, AI yeah, tool yeah. for professionals. There's a difference there. But hallucinations are, I mean, they're also the creative, creative side of an AI tool, but it can also yeah. be a problem for lawyers. How do you make sure that your systems are really reliable and that there are no hallucinations inside of these kind of systems? Yeah. So professional-grade AI needs to be verified so it has verified content that it uses but also verifiable as well and so lawyers are professionals and they, they always have to verify that the information they, they get from an ai is true um but the, the key there is providing tools that are fit for purpose so documents that are properly citated and, and quick and easy user interface so lawyers can can navigate and verify stuff and so so yes hallucinations happen um but it, and it's the job of the job of us at thomson reuters to provide systems that reduce those and provide the, the best interface possible. To, how do to you do this? Huh? So we, we, how do we re reduce? How, how do, do we you reduce like the, 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 the margin for errors? Yeah. So two ways. So it's, it's through how we train the models. Um, and so we have, uh, we don't just surface up our content through, through, through our AI, but we also use our practical log content to train the models and we have verified and verifiable content. Um, but we also have a trust team. So I mentioned the 600,000 tests that we run every year and we have domain experts that that check all of us all of our skills to make sure that they provide an accuracy level that we we des we deem adequate for professional grade AI. And then if you look at the agentic side because then it's going to be even more maybe tricky. Yeah. Because there there is less human oversight then. Now yeah. someone gives a prompt to the AI tool they they give them an assignment and they check maybe the answer but yeah. then you have an agentic AI who's going to do a lot of stuff on his own and then at the end you get the end result and you're like Okay, which routes did this did, did this system take to to come at the end result? Yeah. So how do you make sure that the, also the AI agents are really reliable for the users? Yeah. So there's a few things we do there. So the most important is transparency. Um. So the way that we design our agentic systems is that there's always human oversight of what's happening, and it's really clear to understand as you as a, as an agent steps through a kind of complex process, what exactly it's doing and how it's thinking, and we display all that to the user. Um, we're also working on new capabilities to put humans in the loop of agentic processes. Um, so at any point during an agentic process, if a particular result happens or you, you want to have some oversight from a human, you're able to do that and, and stop the process. Uh, and the third is customizability and configurability as well. Uh, we we want to put our customers in control of how this works. Um, but it's a journey and we're, we're at the start of that journey with agentic now. It, it's really exciting technology, um, but we've got to kind of take it step by step. And there is an interesting movement going on that you see that a lot of law firms have interested in, they're interested in AI, maybe they even have a bit of FOMO. But if we look at the stats of how many lawyers are using AI, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just a very small percentage. And um, there is not a real strategy for a lot of law firms implementing AI. They're just buying the tools or they're buying the software or they're maybe building it. But in the end, they not, don't have a 100% idea what they are doing. Yeah. And that, of course, it makes it harder for them to have success with using these kind of tools. So our research tells us that 79% of lawyers see AI as transformative, but only 31% have a proper strategy behind it. So that, that echoes exactly what you said. And I think there's a, there's a few things at play there. Um, the first is, is, is fear of hallucinations and, con and content. So, they, so they, they worry about working with AI that, that works with the open web. Um, the second is, is the unwillingness to learn new systems. And so the lawyers don't want to have to kind of learn a new system and come to a new product. They're, they're very busy people. And the third is kind of AI concepts as well. So using consu consumer level technologies often could be confusing and you have to kind of learn and understand that a lot of technologies. Yeah, training um, is very important. E exactly. And it's important that you train everybody within an organization. So this can't be like a labs team or an innovation team. You need to give line managers the kind of tools and the, and the training to, to pass that down and really encourage people to adopt, adopt the technology. Do you also give them this training to make sure that they understand these kind of systems and that they know how to work with it? Yeah, exactly. And, that, and that's part of working with Thomson Reuters. We have like la large customer success teams that work. Uh, I speak to, to lawyers every day um, to kind of explain how to use the technology. Um, and we're building capabilities into the pro product to make it easier as well. So we have um, what we call a prompt library. 
um, which is a kind of a, a library of, of, of Thomson Reuters authored prompts. Kind of we've got kind of almost 180 of them in there now. These are built by lawyers. They really guide people in how to use a product and what it can be used for. And we've had we've had like massively positive reception. What for is that. interesting about your software is you also have a system behind the software which is rewriting the prompts. So if a lawyer or another user, because you're also for tax and you're also for accountancy, yeah, yeah. if they're having a prompt and the prompt is maybe not 100 correct, the software will rewrite the prompt to make it more correct. Exactly, and and that gets that's part of the the kind of value of professional grade AI. These are the kind of things that we build into our systems. Because we know lawyers, and we know lawyers aren't experts in AI. They're not. They're not prompt engineers. Uh, we have prompt engineers at Thomson Reuters that can solve these problems. And so, by buying a kind of professional grade AI solution, these are the kind of things that you get. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's a very busy market. There are a lot of companies. Uh, we are here at Legal Geek, and we see all yeah. the stands behind us. A lot of companies are investing in legal AI, and they all want to capture a part of uh, yeah, a yeah, part yeah. of the market. There were a, a few big companies who raised a lot of money, of course. You have Harvey, you have Lagora. Um, how do you make sure that you compete with them and that you also stick to your own plan? Because I can think that sometimes you're like, okay, we need to do this because they're also doing this. Yeah, yeah. so Thomson Reuters is uniquely placed to capitalize on this market. So we have access to the, la the latest models. We have the content that's, that's verified and, and verifiable. Um, we have great people. So we have we have AI engineers and we have thousands of lawyers who work on it every day. Um, but we also have the tools that lawyers already use. So lawyers are already using HiQ and Westlaw and Practical Law. And we're embedding our AI in these products and meeting lawyers where they work. And maybe for a for closing, it's also nice that you, you do a lot of research with your company. I'm reading a lot of reports every week and... I think almost every two weeks I see something from Thomson yeah. Reuters about, oh, we did research with 5,000 lawyers. These are the numbers. We are seeing this, this, and this. And that also gives you a certain edge for sharing a lot of information yeah. also with your competitors. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think we have to share this, this research with the open market because it's such a fast-moving market and our customers need to use this research to understand what, what's going on. Um, within the product organization, like this research re is really valuable for us. It, hel it helps guide how we build the products and alongside our customers and the future direction of, of, of co-counsel at Thomson Reuters.